Test, test, test. One, two, three, test. Okay, so I am in the middle of a dozen different projects. I have not uploaded anything because I'm awful. Uh, I am going to try and quickly show you how to do the bubble, the McDonald's straw bubble rig, because um, it's about that time in the season when it's fun to go down there on the beach and have a little brewski brew and throw straws into the water and hook up and catch and release and just enjoy some good old outdoors time. So we're going to go with that and um, we'll see how it is. The big thing is it's all pretty straightforward. I've got a treble. You can use a different hook. The treble, it's a little bit easier to hook up with. Um, casting bubble, a lot of you guys are like, man, there's no way he casted that bubble so far or that uh, straw so far because it was, you know, it's fake, it's photoshopped. I'm not that good at anything on computers, so these are casting bubbles. You can get them pretty much anywhere. You fill them with water, um, and they help you really bomb those long shots in. It's pretty sweet. Good old McDonald's straw. The key here is the McDonald's color scheme, right? A little yellow, a little red. Mix it up in the water. It looks kind of pink. What else looks pink? Shrimp, right? This is usually a lot cheaper to find down, I guess, in Florida at the, at the, uh, at the Walmarts and whatnot themselves. But uh, I had to order this one online so I could make a video because our Walmarts and Academies here don't really have anything that good. But just a little rubber croaky. See if we make sure that's focused there. And we'll cut it to size. Swivel, bead, and some leader. We're going to, this is not what you're, Main line is, this is the leader portion of your main line. I think this is 25, 30 pound. Strand, big game, just something to survive some of the tooth marks that they give you. But uh, let me see if I can get a camera angle set up here and we will take care of you. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. All right, test one, two, three. One, two, three. Let's see if we can make this work. All right, so the big thing here is I like to use maybe two and a half, let's call it a three inch cut here for the shrimp sizes. Let's go with three-ish inches. Pretty easy, man, just cut your straw. And it's hard to do this through the camera. You YouTube guys are pros. I'm not, I'm not nearly this good. Let's make sure we get the right size here. So the croaky adds a little bit of color, but it also kind of helps the straw last. Everything in salt water has teeth, man. It's not like fresh water. Everything down there is big, it's gnarly, and it has teeth. So, so the idea is you have your main line, and that main line is what you'll put your bubble onto, your bubble rig, right? So let's say this is your main line you would slide this bubble rig on, make sure it's the fat side for, uh, towards the lure. That way, see this? That way as you strip it through the water, it's, it kind of self seals itself and doesn't open and whatnot. Um, so basically, this, this is a simulated main line because I'm gonna use this leader piece uh, for the leader, but let's say main line, put it through the bubble and then Use a bead here just to kind of protect your knot because it's a lot of weight. You're going to be snatching through the water and surf and, and whatnot. So here's this. And then what you would do is tie your swivel to this part here. You know what I mean? I, you can use any knot, man. This isn't, it's not like there's teeth on this. It's not for presentation. I used to use the uh, trilenes because that's what I grew up on. Um, but every now and again, a big fish would pull pull the knot loose. I was probably tying it wrong, who, know, wrong, who knows. But I did uh, pretty much transition every knot I use now, um, other than for drop shots or a few other things. I pretty much just use a uni knot. Man, I'm drawing a blank. So a uni knot, I'll tie one here. I have to kind of get this reversed. Real easy. Come through the uh, the eye there. Come on, camera. Let's 
Let's get focused. Let's do this. There we go. Come through the eye. Get enough of a tag end to work with. And then here's the tag end. Kind of want to fold it over on itself and make a loop, right? Pinch it all together at the top. So now you have main line, tag end, and the loop. Pass it through itself and the main line four times. One. And this is stiff, heavy line, so it's a little harder. Two. Three. And I hope that was in the camera. I'm going to have to redo all of this. Four. This is about what you get right here. Okay. There she is. So with the old, the old slobber lube. Not bad. That might have turned out okay. Look at that beaut. And then go ahead and let's just snip your snip your tag here. This is not again, it's not for presentation. Come on, let's make sure we get this focused in. Neat. So that would be kind of how it sits. So let's say this is the main line right here. This is coming from your rod, right? Comes through the casting bubble. Through the casting bubble, got the uh, bead and the swivel. You would take, now you would take this 25, 30 pound um, leader, right? And tie you a two, two and a half foot stretch of it to the other side here using another uni knot, right? So we're gonna kind of simulate that because that's all I got. And so now you would have the swivel, this would sit here on your main line, just like this, and it would slide up and down as you cast it, and now you'd have your leader, right? Okay, so the kicker here, and this is pretty straightforward, you want to put your croquis on, then you want to put your McDonald's straw over the croquis. Cool. Oh, looks good. Looks like a juicy shrimp. Look at that. Look at that. There's some locals that are just incredible fishermen. I did not come up with this. Don't give me credit. I just wanted to show some folks how to do it because it was a really good time on the beach. And what, what can you do with that? All right. So the treble, the nice thing about the treble hook, I'm not a huge fan of treble hooks because, uh, man, they hook everything. You know what I mean? If you don't have pliers, they're really hard to get out and, and whatnot. I'd much rather use a a single hook or single barbless just because it just doesn't tear up things as much but you kind of want to use a treble here because when you tie it it stays it tucks up in here and it keeps this one package so let me go ahead and tie this again and i use again on this probably just use another uni knot right um, pliers are easier to use here because this treble will hook you as you're doing it but here's the tag in, here's the main line. Let's do our, our layover loop, right? Pinch it all kind of right here. Ooh, hooks are already grabbing my fingers, there you go. And then quickly, four passes. Hey, and let me know in the comments, guys, if you got better knots for this or Better ideas. This is just how I do it. I'm always, always thirsty for new techniques and things to try different knots. I, I did Boy Scouts when I was younger. And knots always kind of fascinated me. Even just to study them, knots are really cool, especially for their uses. But all right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and lube it. I'm gonna grab some pliers because this is gonna definitely hurt if you do it wrong. And let's see if we can do this without messing it up too bad. All right, that might have worked. Not the prettiest, definitely not the prettiest knot. But neither is this style of fishing. We're just going out there and catching stuff. Let's cut your tag in. Cool. All right, and then that's why you use a treble because it sits there. And 
kind of keeps it all together right there at the end. And there you go. That right there, if anything is running, it will hook up. This thing looks, whatever it looks like, shrimp, it looks juicy and everything hits it. So basically here, this is your 25, 30 pound liter, just to kind of survive those teeth. And on the other side here would be your main line and you would have the bead, right? Just like I showed you how to tie it and this to your main line. And it would be like this big slip, slip cast bubble. How you use this, go into the surf, the water, whatever you want, open it up. You can do this with, with it already on the rod, kind of tilt it up and let the air pass out. It'll fill up the water. You can fill it up as much as you want. I, uh, I leave a little bit of bubble in the top so that the, the bubble, the casting bubble sits on top of the water. Um, it doesn't take very much air at all, but it'll really help you cast. And then pass this back through this hole, which might be a little tricky. There you go. Right? And you may need some pliers. After you start casting this, as you, as you rip it through the water, this thing is con constantly re reseeding and putting pressure on this. That's fine. That's what it's supposed to do. But when you're done at the end of the day and you want to drain it, you will not be able to pull this off with your hand. You know what I mean? You're going to have to come to the other side and use a tool to kind of push on this to get it out. I already got it in there pretty hard. You know, push it against something to pop it out. And then you can use pliers and drain it out. But this is the key to casting that light stuff on these heavy rods. So let me know what you think. Um, you know, we, we make fun of the guys that, uh, that get onto us for, oh my God, you're killing the turtles. Uh, man, they don't know, you know, but, but we still, as sportsmen, man, do our part. Make sure you're picking up your trash, pick up other people's trash. Let's preserve the resource and show these folks that just because I got a rod in my hand doesn't mean I'm out there causing trouble. You know, we're probably one of the more protective types that actually, actually do a lot to uh, preserve the resource. So thanks again. Always interested in what you guys think. Let me know. And uh, I'm trying to edit my last bass tournament. I just, man, it's just tough with two kids, two jobs, and, and, and hustling. But I appreciate everything you guys say. And, and uh, a lot of conversations we have, you guys are great. Thanks again.